This training video is brought to you by K Alliance. K Alliance is the 21st century's educational corporation specializing in the most comprehensive enterprise training solutions, ranging from e learning to instructor led training. Press play for success. After watching this video, be sure to become a Facebook fan to receive the latest updates, promotions, and course releases. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel to preview the latest desktop, soft skills, and IT training videos. Let's begin with a look and an overview of IPSec. IPSec is really a suite of protocols and a network standard that allows secure encrypted transmission between two computers or two endpoints over an unsecured network. Being an industry standard for security, it provides numerous benefits for us. Two primary goals are to protect IP packets and to defend against network attacks, but to do so using a non-proprietary security mechanism. IPsec will work with various operating systems on top of the TCP IP protocol. It ensures all traffic between the nodes is kept secure. Through a mutual authentication process, we ensure that we are communicating with the, uh, the appropriate node, and then through the process of data signing and or the encryption of packets, we can ensure both data integrity as well as confidentiality. This is enforced through the use of IPsec policies, and these are policies that have to exist on each individual node. The policies or rules in Server 2008 will determine the type of traffic that will be protected by IPsec and exactly how it will be secured and encrypted. In other words, are we going to use digital signatures and encryption or just one or the other? What type of signing algorithm am I going to use? What's the level of encryption that I'm going to use? The policies will be used to determine all of that. The primary protocols that are a part of IPsec are responsible for data integrity, ensuring that the data is not modified in transit, confidentiality, making sure it's only accessible to authorized parties, and authentication across unsecure network transports like the internet or even the local network. Now, we may consider the LAN certainly much more secure than the internet, but it doesn't mean that we can't ever have attackers on the local area network. Uh, the three main protocols are listed here. ESP, or Encapsulating Security Payload, is responsible for, for both uh, digital signatures for integrity and data encryption for confidentiality purposes. Authentication headers, AH, on the other hand, only provides uh, digital signatures, which give me integrity protection. They also give me non-repudiation. Okay, and that would go for both, really. Non-repudiation is I can't say that I didn't send information. One side of the communication cannot deny that they were a part of the communication because it's digitally signed using private keys. And then you have Internet Key Exchange, or IKE. This is responsible for setting up what are known as SAs, security associations, and then handling the negotiation of the authentication and encryption protocols that we're going to use in a communication session, uh, and the you know, initial exchange, as the, uh, as the name might imply, of the keys, the keys that are used for encryption and decryption. What are the recommended uses of IPsec? Well, it's recommended to authenticate and encrypt host-to-host -host traffic. Now, this would be known as transport mode. Uh, transport mode is enforced through IPsec policies or connection security rules and it protects traffic between hosts. In some cases, this is the only protection that we can have on the internal network. You know, for instance, RPC communication between client and server using server message block protocol is encrypted, but it's not encrypted very strongly. And so if I wanted to provide further protection, I could use IPsec. 128-bit, 256-bit uh, advanced encryption standard encryption levels. And you are uh, significantly raising the bar when it comes to security. Uh, some server systems, uh, like a front-end mail server to uh, a back-end server that holds the databases and the mailboxes, you know, they don't support any level of security except for IPsec. Part of that is because IPsec is sort of agnostic to the, uh, to the upper layer protocols. It's network layer protection, and so the upper layer protocols and services don't really have to support IPsec to be used. So host-to-host -host traffic, we're talking transport mode, 
in the, in the internal uh, network, generally. Authenticating and encrypting traffic to specific servers, okay, would be another one. That's also transport mode. Tunnel mode would be using this for L2TP IPsec, uh, VPN connections and or site-to-site -site, uh, tunneling. Both of those would be tunnel mode. So it identifies unique tunnel endpoints, and those endpoints will handle the mutual authentication and the encryption. You can also use IPsec to enforce logical networks using network access protection. Uh, that's also known as NAP in Server 2008. And IPsec enforcement allows me to set up logical sections. Basically, rules on each machine will uh, state that I'll only communicate with you if you have a health certificate. Health certificate has to be obtained when a machine starts up. And so, if I get the health certificate, then I can communicate with everyone uh, else on the secure, logical portion of the network. But we, then we have a, a border network, and then we have a restricted network for those clients that don't have health certificates. So, those are just a couple of the recommended uses for IPsec. What tools do we have in Windows Server 2008 to utilize IP security? Well, the Windows Firewall with Advanced Security Snap-in for the MMC is our primary utility now. It's used to create and configure those connection security rules for Windows Vista, Windows 7, and Windows Server 2008. Uh, this is one of the nice enhancements of the firewall is that IPsec has been completely integrated into it. In the past, you had to use the IP security policy MMC snap-in or group policies to manage IPsec and the firewall somewhere else. Now you can manage it all uh, together. You still can use the IP security policy MMC snap-in for mixed environments uh, and to create policies that would apply to previous versions of Windows as well. We have both that portion uh, as well as the Windows firewall with advanced security snap-in that are both available in a group policy object. The key benefit to using group policy objects is that I can apply the rules once, link them to an Active Directory container, and they're in effect for all computers that are associated or uh, contained in that container, like a domain or an OU. If you want uh, automation, you could use the NetSH command line tool, uh, the ADV firewall context that will allow me to, uh, to set these via a command line. Okay, so the primary component that we need to deal with or understand when dealing with IPsec in Server 2008 is a connection security rule. Okay, and this is a new component, unless you're you know, familiar with Windows Vista. So it, it is the way in which IPsec is enforced on Server 2008, Windows Vista, and Windows 7. These rules involve authenticating two computers before they begin a communication. We perform that authentication using a variety of different methods. We can use Kerberos, NT Land Manager, certificates, or a pre-shared key. But we have to have a mutual authentication prior to communicating. And then we're going to set up a security association based on the connection security rule so that we can secure the information that's sent between the two computers. They're going to use key exchange, authentication, data integrity, and, and optionally encryption. Those will be based on the IPsec settings that you put up. We can also modify the level of encryption and the signing algorithms that are used. So firewall rules and connection security rules are definitely related, uh, but they are not the same thing. And in fact, we need both of them. The firewall rules are required in order to allow traffic in. The connection security rules are required in order to secure that traffic using IPsec. A firewall rule cannot secure the traffic. Connection security rule can secure the traffic, but not necessarily allow it in. So you need both, which is kind of why they're both integrated into the advanced security uh, snap-in for the Windows firewall. So that's just an overview of IPsec, some of the capabilities uh, that it has, and the ability to secure traffic both on internal networks as well as the internet. It, we also looked at some of the fundamental components that we would use and tools that we would use in Windows Server 2008 in order to implement IPsec. Uh, in the next section, we'll focus in a little bit more and get more specific on the functionality provided by connection security rules.